Hello everybody and welcome to the second video in our series of videos on the plantations. As always we begin with our learning outcomes so by the end of this presentation you guys should know how and why Henry VIII established the Anglican Church. You guys should know what led to Henry adopting the policy of surrender and regrant and finally you guys should be able to explain what the term surrender and regrant was. In our last video we looked at what was going on in Ireland prior to the adoption of the plantation strategy by the English and today we will look at what was going on in England and the issues they had with the Irish that led to the adoption of the plantation policy. The 15th century was a tumultuous time in England. A civil war known as the War of the Roses raged in England between the years of 1455 and 1485. It was a battle between two royal families in England, the House of York, which was represented by the White Rose, and the House of Lancaster, which was represented by the Red Rose. The eventual result of the war was victory for the House of Lancaster after the final big battle of the war, the Battle of Bosworth. The head of this family was a man called Henry Tudor and he was crowned King Henry VII of England and Lord of Ireland in 1485. In relation to Ireland, Henry VII found that despite constant rebellion and insubordination from the Irish, he was not strong enough to directly challenge their power. In fact, attempts to remove the Earl of Kildare, the most powerful of the Gaelicised Anglo-Normans, after he had twice went against Henry VII and supported the House of York, had failed. Henry VII had to keep the Earl of Kildare as Lord Deputy or the King's representative in Ireland. However, Henry kept England peaceful and he managed to sort out the economy. He was succeeded in 1509 by his son, the infamous Henry VIII. Henry was well known for his large appetite for food and women and he married six times in his lifetime. Henry really disliked being opposed on any issue. So when the Pope refused to annul or end Henry's marriage to Catherine of Aragon after he had become infatuated with the young Anne of Boleyn, he forced the English Parliament to name him, and not the Pope, as the supreme head of the church in England in 1534. His first act in setting up this new Anglican church was to end his marriage with Catherine and marry Anne Boleyn, and they lived happily ever after. Well, not really. He had her beheaded in 1536, two years later, so he could uh, marry his next wife, Jane Seymour. This action was known as the Act of Supremacy, and it started the English Reformation. This Reformation was different from the other Reformations of, say, uh, Martin Luther or John Calvin, which were happening around the same time. They were concerned with spiritual issues, while the English Reformation was concerned with political ones. Henry's changes didn't really affect church teachings, only the way the church was governed. So for the majority of the people, it didn't affect their day-to-day -day relationship with the church. However, one of the most controversial things that Henry did was to get rid of all the monasteries in England, and this is known as the dissolution of the monasteries. Again, Henry wasn't opposed to them on any kind of theological grounds, but was worried about the monastic order's loyalty, as they weren't directly under the bishop's control, who was now under Henry's control, but instead these monastic orders were under the rule, the rule of their uh, head of the monasteries, which usually were on the continent and regularly in Rome. Henry wanted to reduce the church's power in England and to raise money for wars in France, Scotland and of most interest to us, Ireland. Henry was unhappy with how powerful the Earl of Kildare was, and in 1534 he decided to act on this, so he summoned the Earl of Kildare to London. The Earl died in London, and his son believed that he had been executed, whereas instead he had died from a gunshot wound sustained in Ireland while fighting the local Gaelic Irish. His son, Silken Thomas Fitzgerald, rebelled against Henry, sparking the Kildare Rebellion, which lasted from 1534 to 1539. Henry sent over a large force and he defeated Silken Thomas and the Fitzgeralds of Kildare. The English expected to easily defeat the Gaelic Irish and the Gaelicized Anglo Normans, who were allies with the Earl of Kildare, and they did. But after every summer of fighting in Ireland, the Irish would regroup in the winter and fight again the next summer. And this cost Henry a lot of money. So he came up with a new policy called 
surrender and regrant. This policy meant that all Irish landowners were to surrender their lands to Henry VIII, who took the new title of King of Ireland as opposed to Lord. They were due to swear an oath of loyalty to him as King of Ireland and head of the church, and this was called the Oath of Supremacy. If any of the landlords were guilty of acting against the king or rebelled against him, then they would forfeit their lands to the king. In return, he would allow them to be official tenants on the land, recognised within English law, and be given English peerage titles, such as the Earl of, so for example, the Gaelic leader of the O'Neills in Tyrone became the Earl of Tyrone. This policy was very popular with the Gaelic Irish, as under English law, they tightened their control on power, as now the eldest son of the Gaelic Lord would automatically become Lord after he died, and it wouldn't be decided by the Darafin, which we looked at in the last video. Uh, and it would give the head of the clan more land. Um, however, this policy, though an improvement on trying to control Ireland, with an army still wasn't sufficient and in the next video we will see the new policy of plantation. So that brings us to the end of our presentation so by now you guys should know how and why Henry established the Anglican Church, you guys should know what led to Henry adopting the policy of surrender and regrant and finally you guys should know what surrender and regrant was. Thanks for watching, hope you guys got something good from this video.